and I've seen this on so many people's houseplants before, it turns completely black and it almost just wilts away and falls off. Hello, fine people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about copper. So this is a video I did for the 12 days of Christmas, I talked about copper. And then I never really, you know, brought it back up. Or no, sorry, 12 days. It's like the, I think it was called 18 essential plant nutrients in every single day leading up to Christmas. They went through every single plant nutrient that is essential. And one of these is copper. Now copper for outdoor plant people is just as good for, as it is for indoor plant people. But for indoor plant people in particular, it's a nutrient that I want you to pay attention to. And there's a few reasons for that and we'll get into those in this video. Today's video sponsor is Ketonic, 100% organic soil amendment sourced from sustainable peat. It's Omni listed and certified by EcoCert Canada. Ketonic helps your garden grow and thrive by promoting microbial activity and naturally replenishing the soil health. Get 15% off your bottle of Ketonic with the discount code in the description. So hands up in the comments if you've seen the fuzzy stuff on top of your soil surface. Now this is fungi and I've done a video on this and how it's really not dangerous, especially if it's the white stuff, because it's actually just natural decomposition of the plant presenting itself on the surface. I'm going to be doing a separate video here soon on rhizobium. Uh, bacterias or mycelium fungi in particular for house plants indoors uh, but ultimately if you don't like the fuzzy stuff and you find it to be ugly copper actually is a great solution for that where you could apply it to the soil surface and it's going to get rid of the hyphae from that uh, fungal issue if you have fungus on your leaves which i've very rarely heard any of you complaining about but it can be a thing sometimes an application of foliar copper is also going to help to curb that or ultimately destroy it uh, altogether. The nice thing about this is that it's technically organic and completely natural. There's no chemical in this other than copper, ionic copper. And so because of that, it's not dangerous to children or to yourself or to your animals if you have them. And it's just all around a great uh, thing to apply. Now, potting soil, if you guys did not know, is often supplemented. So while you get peach or you get coconut coir, there's other stuff in there that goes on behind the scenes, such as the additions of limes and stuff to bring the pH into a normal range and also micronutrient and macronutrient additions. So it does come naturally in a potting soil. The potting soil company is doing what they need to for your plant's health. Ultimately, if you're doing semi-hydro like what this guy is in right now, if you're following the proper procedure for fertilizing with LECA, and I talked about this before, you need to pH balance it, um, add the appropriate levels of nutrients, the proper types of nutrients, then again, you also likely will not have a nutrient deficiency. However, as the potting soil ages, regardless of the potting soil you're using, you will eventually become deficient in copper. Now, I have some plants that have been potted in the same container for ages, one of which is this ginormous fiddle leaf uh, behind me. You actually can't see a majority of the plant because a lot of it is it's kind of bushed up above the camera. And so that's one plant where I don't even have the stomach ultimately at this point to repot it. It's probably gonna live out its life in that container. And so because of that, a foliar application of copper is better than actually placing it in the soil. So you're probably thinking, well, how is it better than placing it in the soil? The reason for this is because copper is immobile, meaning wherever it enters the soil for the most part, it's kind of stuck in situ unless if gravity brings it down into the profile farther. The only way gravity can bring it into the profile farther is through uh, water or mechanical movement, such as manipulation of that potting soil. So as you water a plant that has a foliar application of copper, whatever hasn't been uh, absorbed through the stomata on the bottoms of the leaves will be put into that soil surface where again, it's immobilized, it cannot move. And so, once it's on the surface, it does have to work its way down into that root system through 
again, mechanical means. And so because of that, even me using like a liquid fertilizer or some sort, you know, supplemented with copper, it's just not gonna give me the same effect as actually giving it a foliar application. And when I foliar apply, there are some stomata that can be found on the surface of a leaf, but a majority of your stomata are actually gonna be found underneath. And so misting the bottoms of your leaves are going to be the best case scenario. You can, of course, miss the top. And if you're looking for fungal, bacterial, or even pest uh, prevention, applying it to the surface of the leaf along the stems in the nooks and crannies is also gonna give you really good benefits. But really, truly, applying underneath the leaf where the stomata is, is going to be key. Now, ultimately, the best time to do this is going to be at night. The stomata open during the day to a point, but the stomata really like to open at night. That's when they do most of their work because the plant says to itself, no more sunlight means less heat. Less heat means if I open up my stomata and let everything open, I'm gonna lose less water. And that's ultimately their goal because this rigidity, that rigidity that we have to our plant is caused completely by something we call turgor pressure. That turgor pressure, keeping this plant nice and firm, it's what allows the plant to do phototropism, such as move towards light and that sort of thing. So if we're looking to try to really maximize our copper uptake, you're gonna wanna apply underneath the leaves just before lights out. So the way that copper from a foliar application helps prevent against disease and pests. It comes down to the pH. The pH of a foliar uh, copper application is about four. So what ends up happening is it really disrupts the pH of the leaf surface. It doesn't harm the leaf by any means, but it gives the actual pests really nowhere to go um, because now everything's kind of turned a little bit acidic. As we water and move the copper kind of into the actual soil itself, it's gonna adjust our soil pH very minor amounts because again, we're not, you know, dousing the plant or just doing a few squirts type thing and it can you know affect your soil pH but ultimately to the better if you're looking at something that's a little bit more alkaline. So you're probably thinking well what does copper do? Why do you keep talking about it? And once you start applying copper you're going to notice a ton of growth. If you look at studies that were done with a foliar application of copper you are going to see very drastic differences in the actual growth of that plant in particular new biomass. The amount of new biomass and the size of the leaves that are put out is enormous. And now this comes down completely to one factor. Copper activates an enzyme. This enzyme is used in something called lignin synthesis. Lignin synthesis and all these other enzymatic processes that copper is used in is ultimately key to photosynthesis and getting the carbohydrates or the sugars, if you will, to the places that they need to go. So this is very crucial to some things that are going on with the plant. Now, of course you can overdose a plant, so don't go coppering your plants every single day, but once a month, a good spurts is, you know, by all means a good thing. If you have a copper deficiency or you're wondering like, should I purchase this, should I not? You can apply it to a plant that's showing zero signs of actual deficiency in copper and your plant will be just fine. Uh, if you do a foliar application in particular and you're doing it once a month, it's very unlikely you're gonna overdose your plant. Trust me, it's nearly impossible unless you're very actively trying to do so or you're adding this to the soil, which you most definitely do not wanna actively dump this in the soil by any means. But an actual copper deficiency, this is going to shock many plant people because it's what a huge majority of you are suffering from. So one thing you will notice is your new leaves will cup or they will look smaller in size. Another really common thing is chlorosis. So I have some slight chlorosis happening in this plant uh, leaf here. And so that is one of the reasons why I'm spraying it down with copper. Now this is likely due to me being lazy. Uh, this is a hydroponic pot or semi-hydroponic pot and I have been so busy this last little bit um, that I haven't been able to give it the proper 
waterings that it needs with my pH adjusted with the proper nutrients etc and so forth so I have been using like straight water at times and my tap water here in Saskatoon is at, at an 8 which is way out of the scope of what a plant needs to survive so because of that I'm getting you know some chlorosis in there and ultimately some nutrient deficiencies and you can even see that by the size of the new leaves compared to the old ones the other thing that we also tend to notice when we have a copper deficiencies is a necrotic apical marrow stem so that sounds complicated but it's really not what an apical marrow stem is is literally the leading edge of your plant so if I put this plant here my apical marrow stem is this one right here if my plant was cut or I topped this in some way and it decided to do a Y you technically have two apical marrow stems each one of uh, which is on either side and so on and so forth so you just follow your main stem up and this here is my apical marrow stem on this plant and on this one my apical marrow stem is right here because they only have one leading edge on both inside of there there is a lot of hormones um, in particular auxin which I've talked to you guys in you know high detail many times before and inside of that um, there's a lot of growth hormone in particular that really drives the upper biomass into specific shapes and designs and all that sort of thing and so this can become necrotic and I've seen this on so many people's houseplants before it turns completely black and it almost just wilts away and falls off and people will often say why is my new growth wilting what's going on why is it just that it puts a new leaf out it's got the bracts on it it's ready to you know pop and then all of a sudden everything just dies off is it because the leaf is caught is something going on it's it's a necrosis and so that ultimately can be caused by nutrient deficiencies in particular copper so what we can do is we can apply the copper to the leaves surrounding which again it's in a mobile nutrient but it will be slowly dispersed throughout the plant and you can also try to get it in here as much as possible the actual new growth on the plant is going to um, it's going to have some stomata on the stems and that sort of thing but there's not going to be much stomata in this area so if you can in particular really focus on your last leading leaf it's going to give you the best results but ultimately that necrotic stem is something that's very common in a copper deficiency and i've personally had that in my house plants before and you can kind of see this one acting a little bit goofy so it wouldn't be shocked if this one went necrotic and fall, fell off so I'm gonna try to do as much reconnaissance on this plant as I can because I just love, I love fuzzy petioles. And so I don't want to um, really get rid of that. When we end up with this apical meristem um, being necrotic or falling off or something happening to it, one thing I will say is you will notice a drastic decrease in growth of the rest of the plant because remember there's a ton of hormone in that top little bit there. And so I find when that actually gets destroyed, it, it, your plant can really struggle to put new growth on because we've just really circumvented a lot of the growth and it's different from the form of cutting if we cut you know the hormones will redistribute um, and that sort of thing but when it's like a slow labored you know end of world demise for that it really changes the dynamics of the plant so that's definitely something to watch out for so if i want to just drive one last point home is that this is a tool that should be used once a month for a nice misting of the plant in particular under the leaves but you can of course do the surface and the stems and the cracks and crannies for a disease uh, prevention one thing I will say is if you're using this on fruits and veg um, inside of like a grow tent when they're seedlings or just as full grown plants if you want to get this in bulk because you can get some pretty darn big jugs of this stuff it will actually help enhance the flavor of your fruits uh, whether that be tomatoes or peppers or cucumbers or whatever the case is. However, uh, do not over apply. If you over apply, nutrients is a balanced thing and some people think more the merrier. That is not true. Even with the organic stuff, compost, manures, you name it. If we over apply any sort of nutrient, it ends up butting out other ones. So copper will actually famously butt out phosphorus and potassium, two of which are essential macronutrients. These, this is just a micronutrient. It is not as important as, as phosphorus or potassium. And so it can actually come across as a nutrient deficiency in phosphorus and potassium if you over apply the copper. So only do it as directed. If you're fighting pests, it may recommend you do it once a week, which is fine temporarily while you're fighting the disease. 
But after that point, you know, once a month is good enough. You will see really good results. I think you guys will be very happy with this. This one I got from the grass shop here in Saskatoon, but I'll also leave a link in the comments down below for um, those in the US or if you want a different source for this, I'll find some sources for you and I will link them down below. But with that being said, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.